Here's what happened in Nazi Germany. So when, when, when Hitler came to power, he was very interested in public health campaigns. And so he set, he, he formulated a number of policies, including f uh, formulating these uh, vans that went around screening people for tuberculosis. And at the same time, he announced a, announced a policy to beautify and purify Germany. And so he encouraged the factory owners to clean up the factories, to get rid of the rats and the insects, and to plant flowers and so forth in front, right? So it was cleanliness and beauty. They used Zyklon B as the agent for for disinfecting the factories, Zyklon B. Zyklon B was the gas that was used in the gas chambers. So Hitler started out by getting rid of the rats and the parasites and the insects in Germany, along with his public health campaign. And then he moved into the insane asylums and started a euthanasia campaign. And then he moved outside into the broader political sphere and started to target the people that he didn't consider pure as parasites, capitalizing on the behavioral immune system and people's intrinsic sense of disgust. And so I'm gonna show you some of the propaganda that did that so that you know how this sort of thing works. Okay, so this is from Richard Konigsberg, who wrote a book called Hit Hitler's Ideology, Embodied Metaphor, Fantasy, and History. So we've already, we, we've already sort of discussed the idea, this is sort of an archetypal idea, uh, grounded in biology, you know, that you're, you're run in some sense on this underlying biological platform of deeply rooted hypothalamic systems and amygdalic systems and so forth, that, that, and that you're a, con a, a collection of those underlying systems organized at some higher order level, while those underlying systems manifest themselves in fantasy. So, for example, if you're hungry, you're going to get a fantasy about going to get something to eat. And if you're lonely, you're going to get a fantasy about someone that you'd like to be with and so forth. Because the fantasy is part of the manner in which these underlying biological motivation systems think. Okay, so what do you think? How do you think and talk if you're possessed by disgust? Okay. The state did, this is, this is, these are from Hitler's, Hitler's utterances. The state did not possess the power to master the disease, the menacing decay of the Reich was manifest. The masses feel that the mere fact of the Jews' existence is as bad as the plague. Politicians tinkering around on the German national body sought most the forms of our general disease, but blindly ignored the virus. At the time of the unification, the inner decay was already in full swing and the general situation was deteriorating from year to year. The nation did not grow inwardly healthier, but obviously languished more and more. It's all disease metaphor. It's all disease metaphor. The symptoms of decay of the pre-war period can be reduced to racial causes. Anyone who wants to cure this era, which is inwardly sick and rotten, must first of all summon up the courage to make clear the causes of the disease. They think that they must demonstrate that they are ready for appeasement so as to stay the deadly cancerous ulcer through a policy of moderation. The Jew must take care that the plague does not die. If this battle should not come, Germany would decay and at best would sink to ruin like a rotting corpse. You can see in the Reich today an example of mortal decay. That is not the speech of someone who's possessed by anxiety. That's the speech of someone who's possessed by disgust.